Hello guys, the 49th Gunner back again with a nice happy bit of news for the Arsenal fans, a 2-0 victory for us, keeping us four points at the top of our group. Uh, PSV winning tonight also 1-0 against Lons, but that hasn't really made too much of a difference. We're still flying high at the top and uh, we want to keep pushing that so we can make the last 16. But, I, I mean... Before I even go into, I've made a lot of notes, but before I even go into anything, despite Martinelli not scoring, tonight was the Martinelli show. Martinelli has got three lungs. He's got three lungs in his body. He was very, very unfortunate not to put a few, um, put a few in, but like I say, um, he was, I'm going to just say it straight away. He was the, he was the, the man of the match. This was, this was the, uh, Look at how fast Martinelli is, show. Missed the pace. So the poor defender covering him had absolute nightmares, I think. Uh, throughout the entire game, Martinelli had that poor boy completely and utterly panicking, put out of position, put out of place. It must have been an absolutely horrendous experience for the uh, the right back in charge of marking him. Can can't imagine. I can't imagine, as an Arsenal fan, I'm quite fortunate it must be horrendous for teams to see like Saka, Martinelli, you know, Jesus when Jesus is fit, all this pace and these tricky, tricky runners, you know, so it's uh, it's the Martinelli show, but four points at the top of the group, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, Diego Alonso, the uh, Sevilla manager, um, actually in his um, interview, he complimented us saying um, that we were in the top five best teams in the world, you know, um, They've got a phenomenal record, Sevilla, in the in the uh, Europa League. They've won the uh, Europa League seven times in seventeen years. They've obviously they're an experienced side, and um, that's a fantastic record. I think any team would be proud of. You know, um, no Sergio Ramos, unfortunately for them. Um, I had work tonight, and I may have been able to go to that game. I had a friend that offered me a ticket, but. Small silver lining was Ramos not playing because I think I would have been a little bit more gutted if uh, Ramos would have been playing. I'm I'm gutted I couldn't go, so I'm trying to find the uh, silver lining. And Ramos not playing, I would love to have seen Ramos on the pitch if I would have went. So, um, you know, um, yeah. Um, silver linings, eh? Um, like I say, anyway, I think the Europa League, um, Sevilla have, have done well in it. Like I say, seven wins in um, 17 years is fantastic. And I think the Europa League gets more and more interesting as years pass. Um, it never used to really grab my attention, but of the, re the recent sort of three or four years, it's got a lot more interesting. Um, severe struggle on their travels generally. They've not registered in the way win any of their last eight Champions League matches, while they've only won once in their last 11 matches in all European competitions. Sevilla's season isn't going particularly well for them. They've only had three victories in their last now 17 games this uh, season. A uh, highlight of their season being a 1-1 draw against Real Madrid came just before our triumph um, against them, pre against Sevilla previously. previously. Um, yeah, so uh, no Odegaard, no Jesus, no Party, no Smith-Rowe. Um, Urien Timber on track, looking, looking like he's going to be back earlier which is great, but obviously he wasn't playing tonight with his injury. Although seeing the progress he's making being sort of above expectations is always, always great. Um, so yeah, despite these knockbacks, setbacks we've had, you know, party we may not see for a long while. Jesus still being out. Odegaard as well. Um, and Ketia wasn't available tonight. Smith Rose injured again, bless him. Uh, feel so sorry for the guys, you know, it must be horrible for for, you know, any one or two players, but we have a few names now. So Saka was injured towards the end of the game as well, had to come off. Um, I'll mention that, go into detail in a little while. But uh, yeah, no more injuries. The gods, the gods of football, no more injuries. Please, please bless us with no more injuries. Um, we started with Rea, White, Saliba, Gabriel, Tommy, Jorginho, Rice, Havert, Saka, Martinelli, and obviously no one Ketty. We had Trossard up top. Um, oh, not the camera. That's good. Um, yeah, Sergio Ramos, uh, due to a calf um, injury, um, he he was he was injured. They lost a few. Uh, they played Celta Vigo, and they had um, Oyan Nyland and their left back Marcus Acuna out as well. So um, 
they both start they started against us in the previous game but not in this game so um yeah they had a few they had a few injuries themselves you know and obviously with Sergio Ramos not being in the team that was a huge that's got to be a huge a huge problem for them you know he's very experienced fantastic on the ball and I mean he look he looks the same as he did 10 years ago you may agree with that um, we had an early chance from Martinelli. Havertz uh, missed a, a really, really good chance with a header. Um, we came firing out the blocks in the first half, but Villarreal sort of tightened it up a bit, um, you know. And uh, despite being wasteful here and there, I think Villarreal sort of managed to seal seal a lot of our attacking chances up and defend relatively well. I don't, it certainly wasn't a game that Sevilla are going to want to remember. They're going to want to put this game far far out of their memory. Um, they had a few fouls um, early in the first half. Trossard was keeping possession well. Um, throughout the entirety of the first half, he was holding the ball up, keeping possession. They're playing absolutely fantastically. And, um, you know, he was fortunate enough to score because of that. Um, lovely to see Trossard getting a goal. Um, he played absolutely brilliantly in the first half and it was very well deserved. Um, him, Martinelli and Rice, out of the three of them, I'd probably say Martinelli was my man of the match. Um, Arsenal also have only failed to score in one of their now last 20, their last 27 of their previous group stage games. That was quite interesting to find that out. Um, yeah, um, like I say, it's quite interesting just to see how well we do in the group stages and hopefully now we can progress and, you know, take that kind of, uh, take that goal scoring form we have in the group stages forward with us into the 16 and the quarters. And hopefully that will uh, do us a world of good. Um, Declan Rice playing absolutely brilliant. He was able to switch the attack and the defence absolutely fantastically. He was playing the balls out to Martinelli. Martinelli was very unlucky not to score f three or four goals easily. But I think Rice is the absolute pivotal man in the middle for us. He's a... Uh, Complimented here every single week and um, Martinelli being my man of the match this game, uh, but Rice obviously being a close second, um, you know, it was absolutely astounding for us. All game, you could you, you, you could you could be confident, even even if you're not watching it. I was listening to it on the radio, but just knowing Declan Rice is in the team gives you a boost of confidence. That's without even seeing it, you know, on the screen. He's such a fantastic player. Um I've been really, really um, impressed with him all season, as you guys know. Uh, ben White was unlucky with an effort from his weaker foot, just missing. Um, Sack had a penalty chance that was it was not given by the referee. I didn't like the referee today. I thought he was very, very... I don't know. Uh, he was very ignorant towards the decisions that went against sort of Arsenal. And he there were not any cards given to Sevilla in the first half when there maybe should have been one or two. But I, obviously people are going to say, well, you're an Arsenal fan, you're bound to say that. But, you know, watch the highlights, see if you agree with me. If you haven't caught the game, or well, let me know what you think. I think the referee was a bit um, a bit all over the place. Um, yeah, Arsenal's attacking threat was consistent all the way through the game, let alone the first half. I've written up to the first half on this particular page, but we just weren't hitting the target. Um, Trossard's goal was started off by Jorginho and assisted by Saka. Saka now has two goals and three assists in four games, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, Saka was amazing too today. Despite the injury at the end of the game, he played. He was he was skipping around players and just you you can tell he's just enjoying himself. He's just enjoying himself. Um, he went. He was he was down injured, but he didn't want to come off. Uh, Kiwior ended up coming on for Saka at the end of the game, sort of just to make that defensive, you know, protection build up build up at the end. Um, but, uh, yeah, Saka wanted to play every minute, even when he was injured. And, uh, yeah, so let's just hope there's no injury. There's no injury um, to Saka, because we seem to be saying that regularly. We're always worrying about Saka's uh, knocks and things that he's picking up. Uh, I've wrote so much down. Um, Saliba, um, absolutely brilliant today. He had one lap of consciousness in the second half. Um uh, and he he's played absolutely brilliantly today. He had uh, made an excellent sliding recovery. He made a mistake, but managed to recover really, really well and had a lapse of concentration in the second half. But other than that, Saliba, Saliba played a solid 9 out of 10 game. Um, the first half was completely and utterly Arsenal's and Arsenal should have scored more. But uh, yeah, Trossard, Rice and Martinelli linking up. 
all looking threatening towards the end of the first half. Nothing coming from it. Tommy Asu came off for Zinchenko in the second half. Um, Martinelli, I've written here, Martinelli is taking the mick out of the defenders all game. Kai Havertz was unlucky not to score with a good left foot shot that just went missing. Kai Havertz is looking effective. He's just not finding the target. And I think if you don't see the game and you hear Havertz's name, Havertz is putting the effort in. He's putting the he's putting the rounds in and he's not he needs to be scoring, he needs to be getting the assist, but he is, you know, he is putting the effort in. He is you can tell he's trying, you can tell he wants it, you know, it's just not it's just not falling for him. Um like I say. It's kind of hard to, uh, you know, defend him. Um, Martinelli, uh, at one point, linked up in the second half, linked up with Trossard. Um, shooting, Trossard hit it off of his left and was unlucky not to have another goal. Um, there was a beautiful build-up of around 25, 26 passes um, before that before that shot of Trossard's. That, that The goal would have been well-remembered. It would have been like a legendary goal, like the goal we scored against Norwich. Uh, yeah, uh, like I say, the second goal, Martinelli playing a beautiful ball to Saka. Saka with the pace and accuracy to make it 2-0. Two goals, like I say, two goals and three assists and just four appearances. We are so lucky to have Saka in our squad. Um, like I say, Martinelli being the sort of main, the main man in the game. I'd say Saka would be up, up there as well. We're, we're spoiled for choice with who we could have picked for man of the match in that game, which is just absolutely great. Um, I'd certainly give out like a, a first place to a first place to Martinelli, a second place, a joint second place to Saka, um, to Gabriel, um, to Saliba, to Rice. Uh, all positives, really. Um, there were quite a few malicious challenges towards the end. Quite a lot of unnecessary cha challenges. Sevilla went from getting no players booked to win the first half, questionably, to. Um, Getting uh, f they had three bookings in total. Uh, malicious, malicious challenge from Sanchez. Um, you know, complete, completely silly. No need for uh, Sanchez to get booked. Um, Rice and Zinchenko valiantly defending at the end. Uh, Acampos got frustrated with the uh, lack of Sevilla's attacking options, and you know that. The waste, the wastefulness of Sevilla, and he, Ocampos got himself put in the book as well. Um, yeah, so that was silly, silly by Sevilla because because I don't I don't dislike Sevilla. I'd like them to go on and do well in the rest of the season. Certainly with like Rakitic and some of the some of the names they've got in there. I'd like to see some of these players who were later in their career that have given us great football over the years. I'd like to see them have good final seasons, you know. And uh, so far. They're not having the best season. They're certainly not having the best season. What's that? Three wins, like I say, three wins out of 17 now. So uh, hopefully they can pick it up. Now, well, they're not Arsenal's problem anymore. So, you know, hopefully they can they can pick it up. Strange one at the end. Referee, um, the referee booked Zinchenko for time-wasting, even though there was a substitution being made. Uh, Fabio Vieira and Reese Nelson came on for Martinelli and Trossard. Martinelli, you could tell he, he looked gutted to be going off. He he wanted a goal and, you know, he, he deserved one as well. But, uh, yeah, odd to see um, Zinchenko booked for um, basically, I don't know, when substitutions are coming on, how is he time-wasting? Um, Saka got booked as well at the end for walking off the wrong side of the pitch with his bad ankle instead of just going the quick way and he got booked for time-wasting, you know, which was a bit silly. A bit silly too. Lamella um, had a chance towards the end of the game, which was dealt with easily. Um, Elneny got a little chance as well. For, came on for Jorginho. Gabriel took the armband off of Jorginho. Um, Declan Rice, uh, beautiful work at the end of the game. Uh, switching between attack and defence perfectly. Even 80 minutes in, he's, it's like he's got three lungs. Declan Rice is absolutely fantastic. Um, like I say, so we've got absolutely great things to look forward to with this team. Let's just hope we can keep them injuries away and do well against Burnley. Hopefully we'll have Saka back, not injured for the Burnley game. Um, I apologise if this video has been a little bit more bullet point and a little bit more, um, you know, sort of straight to the point. I'm very happy to see that we've won, as I always am. I'm always I'm always buzzing and happy. I'm just a bit, bit tired, you know, long day, you know, so... Wow, wow. So, um, yeah, absolutely fantastic work. And 
let's hope that we can continue just get another get another Champions League win and make sure that we put a full stop on the end of this group stage and get straight into the round of 16, you know. Um, positive stuff, all positives all around. Let's just hope Saka isn't injured. <laughs> so yeah, we'll we'll be we'll be praying for it to see him against but to see him against Burnley when that's when that's up and coming. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much. Um, if you've watched, I appreciate it. If you liked and subscribed and want to comment, I really appreciate you guys watching the videos and uh, finding out little bits and bobs I got to say about Arsenal. I always do my little reviews. Today is a little bit more bulletproof, a bulletproof bullet point, you know, uh, because like I say, just. Feeling a little bit knackered today, so I've just resorted to the notes. I wrote so many of them as well, you know. I think it's understandable. I did so. Anyway, come on, you gunners. Let's keep it up. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.